This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters, and we welcome you to another broadcast of the Word Ministries. We're grateful for all of you that have tuned in to this broadcast. We want to take this time to thank all of the affiliates at WOIL TV 47, located in the beautiful city of Sylacauga, Alabama. Thank God for Brother Jimmy Dale Abrams, Brother Ben Duke, Brother Robert, and all of those that are affiliated with WOIL TV 47. And thank God for Vince, the one that allows this uh, broadcast to come before you. And we're just thankful and grateful to everyone out there. And I just pray to be a blessing and an encouragement to all, amen, that God opened the door for. And I thank God for you, all of you out there, all across the world. We're grateful to God. Amen. You will notice on my shirt today, it says, He died for me. Amen. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He's the one, not only did He die for me, but He died for you. Why did He do it? Amen. Because he loved us. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died for me. And if he died for me, he died for you. He's such a loving God, that if you were the only one on earth, he still would have died. He still would, would have went to Calvary. And we ought to just give him thanks. We can't repay him. Songwriter said he, we owed a debt that we could not pay. He paid a debt that he did not owe. Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. My sin, I don't know about you, I know about you, but I don't know how you really look at it. My sin was crimson stain, but he made it white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. My sin was crimson stained. He washed it white as snow. Glory to God. We're going to go to him in prayer, and we're going to get to this message that we talked about last week, and that is, amen, that man, Jesus Christ. Amen. I long to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings, and the power of his resurrection. I long to know him that came into this world to give his life a ransom for many, you and I. I long to know him more, the one that shed his blood on Calvary for the remission of our sins, the one that died for our sins, that we, you and I, might have a right to the tree of life. The one that was wounded, can't you see him now? Can't you discern his body on the tree? That he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. If I live for him in sincerity, if I preach his name in sincerity, amen, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Amen. You can't do 
in this name sincerely and not be blessed and not be delivered and not be free. Hallelujah. I say that for myself, but I encourage you to take these words in. You can't serve him from a sincere heart. Amen. And he not deliver for you. He'll do it. He'll take care of you. Hallelujah. Spiritually, physically, financially, mentally. Somebody needed mentally. You know you'd be out your mind if it had not been the Lord who was on your side. You've been through enough to be at Bryce. You've been through enough to be in a mental hospital. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of him and only because of him, we can be steadfast, unmovable. Talk about me. Put you down. Lie on you. Scandalize your name, persecute you, but that's all right. You can be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I'm so glad that we can, don't have to be weary in well-doing. In due season, we shall reap if we faint not. I take that off of the pages and I apply it to my heart. Amen. That I won't be weary in well-doing. Glory to God. Because we shall reap in due season if we faint not. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that has gone out of your mouth, shall not return unto your void but shall accomplish what it please, shall prosper where it is sent. I pray, God, for healing, for salvation, for deliverance, for the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> According to my faith, be it done unto me. Lord, I touch and agree for the power of the Holy Ghost. Fall fresh on me. Lord, fall fresh on me that I may be used of you, that I may speak, not an excellency of speech, hallelujah, not an excellency of words, but in power and in demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Let your power prevail in my life. I touch and agree right now, God, for these your people, for all that they stand in the need of, everyone that is viewing in, whatever their need is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you right now. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins. Lord, I thank you for renewing Hallelujah. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. On last week, we talked about a question that was asked, and that question was, what is that man doing at your house? From clarity standpoint, it's not that man that come to your house to bring drama but that man that come to your house to bring deliverance. Not the man that come to your house to bring mess, but the man that come to your house to bring you a message. Not the man that come to your house to bring trash, but the man that come to your house that causes you to triumph. Amen. And nobody can do it like this man. And his name is Jesus. He desire to be at our house. And when we allow him to come to our house, he can do something. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody save me 
like Jesus. Can't nobody heal me like Jesus. When he's at our house, he does a turnaround. Amen. Jesus Christ. What is he doing at our house? A lesson was taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, dealing with a tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus. Dealing with a man that was said to be short in stature, yet he was rich. Amen. Whether you're short in stature, whether you're rich or poor, tall or short, we need this man at our house. And this man named Zacchaeus, did what he had to do to see Jesus. And we ought to do what we have to do to see Jesus. Amen. This lesson, Zacchaeus, he entered Jericho and was passing through. Jesus Christ was. And that was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Amen. But Zacchaeus focus today wasn't on his riches. It wasn't on collecting taxes. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable because of the crowd. I stopped by today to tell you, don't let the crowd stop this man from coming to your house. Amen. The crowd will get you missing out on the main one that we all need in our house. Glory to God. Zacchaeus is not the only one that need him. We all need him at the house. So what Zacchaeus did, amen, because of the crowd, he was small in stature, so he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree. What was he trying to do? He done that, the reason why, in order to see him. Amen. Sometimes you got to run ahead. Your friend might want to say, well, we going to come. Amen. We'll get in the church when we get through party. We'll get in the church and we'll give ourselves to Jesus, but we're going we to party. We're going to tear the roof off for right now. But, but, but because of the crowd, the Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree. <laughs> For he realized that Jesus was about to pass that way. <laughs> Verse 5 says, uh, when Jesus came to the place, <laughs> amen, he looked up and said to him, <laughs> Amen. In my mind, amen. I can see Jesus looking up in a sycamore tree and calling, amen, him by name. I heard, amen, the text says, Zacchaeus, make haste, amen, and come down. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop by the day to tell you he will come to your house. Amen. Glory to God. What is he doing at your house? 
Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. In other words, get in the hurry for today. I must abide at your house. I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus did what we all need to do. Uh, amen. He hurried and came down and received him, not sadly. Uh, amen. But he received him joyfully. Uh, he received him gladly. Uh, amen. Look at the crowd. Uh, amen. Glory to God. Uh, always trying to find fault. Amen. In the righteous one. Uh, amen. They began to say when they saw it. Uh, they all began to grumble. Uh, saying he is gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Uh, Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, uh, he didn't address the crowd, um, uh, amen, he didn't come for the crowd, uh, amen, he said, Lord, the half of my goods, um, uh, yea, God, uh, I give to the poor. Amen. If I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. In other words, whatever I've done, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Glory to God. What is he doing at your house? I want to tell you today, at your house, amen, he didn't come come to fix your sink. Uh, he come to fix our hearts. Uh, yeah. Uh, he didn't come to regulate your air conditioner. Uh, he come to regulate our mind. Uh, he's a heart fixer. Uh, he's a mind regulator. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is he doing at your house? Uh, well, he didn't come to condemn your house. Uh, yeah, girl. God, uh, he does not have a condemning letter. Uh, amen. He has a letter uh, in John 3.16. Uh, For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son, uh, a son to come to your house, uh, a son to regulate your mind, uh, a son to fix our heart. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten the Son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, what is he doing at your house? Uh, I repeat, he didn't come to condemn your house. Uh, the scripture goes on to say uh, that God sent his Son into the world uh, not to condemn the world, uh, but that the world through him uh, might be saved if you let him at your house if you let him do what he want to do hallelujah you can have eternal life yeah he didn't come to your house to steal from you that's what the thief come from John 10 says hallelujah that the thief he comes uh, not but for to steal, uh, to kill, uh, and to destroy. Uh, that's what he come to your house for, uh, to steal your joy, uh, to kill your spirit, uh, to destroy your mind. Uh, yeah, but that's not the one you want at your house. Uh, Jesus said, uh, I am come uh, that you might have life uh, and life more abundantly. Uh, I come to your house uh, to give you joy. 
high, unspeakable, and full of glory. I come to your house to give you peace that surpasses knowledge. I come to your house to give you peace. Hallelujah. That pass all understanding. Men won't understand how you keep your peace with all you're going through. That's your opportunity to give your testimony that Jesus is my peace. That Jesus, amen, is my joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. When he's at our house, Jesus will give peace where peace is needed. When he's at our house, can't you hear him say, my peace give I unto you, not as the world gives, but my peace I leave with you. What is that man doing at your house? The word tells us what he wants to do. He wants to build our house. Amen. He don't want a substitute. He won't send a substitute. Except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. He didn't come to steal from your house. He come that you, we might have life, life more abundantly. He didn't come to condemn our house. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to lock us out of our house. He said, I'm the door of the sheep, and by me if any man enter, he shall be saved. Hallelujah. He didn't come to our house for us to serve and minister to him. He come to our house to serve us and minister to us. And to give his life a ransom for many. You and I were one of the many that he gave his life a ransom for. All to be at our house. Amen. He brings love to the house. He brings Peace to the house. He brings joy to the house. He brings righteousness to the house. He brings all that we need to the house. What are we doing? What are we allowing him to do at our house? If we allow him, he'll give us confidence. Confident of this very thing, Philippians 1, 6 says, that he, meaning Jesus Christ, which has begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What is he doing at your house? Amen. He's there. If we only look to him, David said, I'll lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. What is he doing at your house? He want to build us up. He want to give us the grace to carry us through. What is he doing at our house? Hallelujah. We know what he want to do if we study the word. He want to take care of us. Well, what do I need to do?
Cast all of your care, your anxieties, your worries, your children, your finances, your job, your uncertainties, your disappointments, and say, here, Jesus, he's at the house anyway. Don't slumber. He don't sleep. He even gives angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. We know what he wants to do. We know what he desires to do. And if you tried him, you know what he can do at your house. Exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You can ask for one thing, and he may double it. He'll do it, because he does exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You can ask him to heal in one area, heal, heal in that area, and heal in another area at the same time. Hallelujah. Reason I know, because when he saved me, he healed me too. Hallelujah. Exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Zacchaeus climbed this tree to see him. Jesus looked up, called his name, said, Make haste, come down, listen to this, for salvation has come to your house. You come to see him. He, for you coming to see him, he'll give you what you need. And if you're not saved, he know you need salvation. But that's what he come for. Came to save his people from their sin. He came into this world to save sinners. And that was you and I. We were lost. But he came into this world to save sinners. He came to our house, amen, to save to the utmost. I used to think it was hard, but it's not. It's just a simple act of obedience, of receiving him. Hallelujah. Just receiving him. He know everything. He know our thoughts, from afar, past, present, and future. He know our uprising. He know our down sittings. He know where we've been. He know where we are. And he know where we're going. And he still love us. I want him. And I want him to the fullest. Why? Amen, because I know with him to the fullest, I can affect the world. Hallelujah. I can cause young people to give their life to Christ, not put them down, but cause them to come to Christ. Not reject them, but receive them. Jesus didn't reject us. He received us. Jesus didn't put us down. He picked us up. Jesus didn't talk about us. He talked to us. Jesus didn't say, I'm through with you. He said, he that come to me, I will in no wise cast him out. Jesus didn't say, forget about you. He said, come and I'll give you life and life more abundantly. What is he doing at your house? Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Let him in.